Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. A Bears Conference, I regret I can't be with you. Um, uh, and let's rattle on. We've got a lot of ground to cover. I've got many of my Mindaroo team in the audience with you who are seeing various parliamentarians, and certainly my wife, Nicola, who um, has asked me not to ask her to stand, um, is also in the audience with you. So please, by all means, make yourself known to her and our team. But simply put, my friend Jeff Raby asked me to participate in this event. I have to say I was delighted. The passion I feel for the future of the Australian agricultural industry runs very deep within my family and across dairy and beef, grains, fruit, vegetables, aquaculture, the demand for high quality, reliable, sustainable produce in our region is very large and it's growing. Some of you may know that I grew up in the bush in a pastoral station in the Pilbara in the far northwest and isolated outback. I saw the agony and I felt the pain that caused my parents such anguish as they bore personal witness to the ravaging effects of drought. Whilst the vegetation around us wilted, it wasn't until I saw the wildlife, the birds, the kangaroos, the emus, goannas, and eventually the sheep and cattle also all meet by their thousands, their dry and painful, dusty death. It's those emotions that took hold and that I can never forget, and which, through that grief, when we question why that mineral-rich soil could not partner with a companion of abundant water, that I'm grateful I can touch on this vision with you later. And one of the reasons, Jeffrey Raby, I'm grateful to accept your invitation to speak at a Bears. So, of course, living on the land is not for the faint-hearted, but I truly believe the agricultural sector and our nation will experience real strength in the future and scaffold our domestic economy. It will strongly assist our neighbouring nations as they transition to rely on high quality food that only us as Australia can be guaranteed to supply. And there are parallels with this all through Australia's agricultural industry to the mining world less than two decades ago. I can't, cannot even begin the, to list them, but suffice to say, today's agricultural sector reminds me of that self-evident opportunity I saw when I started Fortescue in the early 2000s. While the speed bumps are well known, Australia's economy has changed dramatically due to the growth of the mining industry during that time, and it will never look back. Australia is blessed with strong demand for its product and a smart, committed people and farming fraternity. We're willing to have a go and to question to everything to help us unlock our potential. But are we going to capitalise on this? Recently, we formed the Australian Sino 100 Year Agricultural Food Safety Partnership, bit of a mouthful, I'm sorry, ASA 100, let's work with that, to invest in downstream beef processing as part of our own family's commitment and to shore our own belief in the themes that offer Australian producers that huge potential downstream value adding. And I'd like to touch on this later as well. I'm asking all of us in Canberra and across Australia, take this opportunity. There are other nations that are filling our shoes as Australia's primary agricultural supplier and we cannot suffer an entitlement attitude or be lethargic in our response. To fall guilty of either will say our, see our nation fail one of its greatest opportunities of this century. No different to the mining industry 20 years ago. It's that obvious, ladies and gentlemen. So our Asian neighbourhood is one of Australia's greatest assets, particularly the agricultural industry. China is critical, but so is Indonesia, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, India and the growing southeast economy. Each nation is fortunately experiencing a growing middle class and will continue to increase demand for high quality and safe produce. And we're well credentialed to supply these growing nations and we mustn't be fearful of having long term demand for our products. The challenge is to make sure we focus on our supply efforts and maximise our productive capacity. Let's embrace our neighbouring nations and key trading partners. These relationships offer multiple benefits beyond simply providing a customer for our products. The enmeshment of our cultures will never threaten Australia's proud culture, but it can broaden our appreciation of the world beyond our own shores. It is time Australia embraced all Asian nations and stepped away from past non-exclusive non -exclusive alliances. They do not help our future. Exclusive alliances to non-exclusive embrace of Asia. That is our future. Let's benefit from investing further in downstream processing of, of our commodities and push the value of brands and marketing to capture more value in the chain. We have a great brand in Australia, so let's sell it. We must utilise the huge latent potential offered by our neighbouring nations to invest 
their much needed capital into our agricultural sectors. This will help us increase production and increase technology, innovation and all around improve efficiency because the competition from others is upon us and we must move ahead. That relationship can always work the other way too. You know, where Australia can export its know-how, where we can export our practices to the rest of the world. There does exist huge wealth opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, for our fellow Australians to export our intellectual property in the industries which we know very well, grain, beef, dairy, etc., to the rest of the world. As Australians, we often take our intellectual property for granted. Let's not do that. Let's invest where we can leverage that knowledge to its highest. Let's take Israel. It's a, it's a Middle Eastern dry country, but it's invested massively in Vietnam. It now has exported capital, technology, producers and herd. It's one of, the, uh, one of Asia's largest dairy producers, Israel. We also need to think outside mainstream commodities. Let's look at the huge latent potential in aquaculture and other high value niche products. And let's now turn to China. There's been so much press around China that their newfound palate, their pop, their, our popularity of Australian wine, it will be replicated across all other Australian agricultural products. Let's get this marketing and branding right and we'll have much to be proud of. On that subject, I've developed a strong sense of respect for the economic ambitions of China and their unparalleled ability to take a very long-term investment view. I also deeply respect the single-minded leadership and focus of all the Asian nations, but particularly China, as they focus on their people and that focus on people I think could serve us all well. We've secured the support from both Chinese and Australian leaders to consider several nation building investments. Only three years ago, Fortescue Metals Group founded the Senior Business Leaders Forum of which Mr. Jeff Raby and one of China's foremost bankers, Mr. Wang Bo Ming, are general secretaries. They, with Chairman Lee, Chair of China's most influential policy bank, Exum, and myself act as co-chairs. So we've enmeshed a group of independent Australian Sino Mutual Development think tank experts. It includes around a dozen of the most relevant players to China from Australia and the same number to Australia from China. It serves this informal relationship builder between the two sovereignties and has been accepted by the leadership very well of both nations. And this gives us a unique ability to look at investment and not be intimidated, like the Chinese are not, to not be intimidated by the size of the capital required or the long-term nature of the payback. This is what builds nations. Chinese are very keen to see Australia continue to prosper. They need to see us increase our productive capacity. If we don't, they'll be served by other nations. But if we can fuel our own domestic needs and also to continue to help supply theirs, it's a win-win situation. And critically important for our economy. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm working hard to develop investment opportunities that will dramatically increase the capacity of the Australian economy, including large-scale rail and water projects I wish to introduce today. We need to remain focused on Australia offering stable political climate and encouraging foreign investment in this style of infrastructure. We've spent 100 years building a reputation for political stability and common sense but reputations shrink pretty fast if they're not upheld. So, understandably, Australian producers were pleased with the announcement of the Free Trade Agreement. There is much work to, to do and make sure the implementation of this real and lasting benefit comes to all our producers at home. There are also many non-tariff-based barriers that exist in foreign trade that need to be streamlined to further help Australia's potential. For example, Import licensing regimes, custom processes and restrictions to trade partners are as prohibitive as tariffs and stifling trade. Like the SBLF before it, the ASA 100 was a landmark alliance formed between a broad section of the Australian agricultural sector and China's top agricultural food distribution companies and customers. 100 years in duration, 100 um, partners, 100% quality, 100% reliability. It's this partnership formed with the Premier of China, which we intend to use to help Australia meet their massive food and safety, food, uh, food and food safety challenges. So look, the aim of the ASA 100 is to build these partnerships, trust, technology sharing, and long lasting business friendships across both nations in the agricultural and food sectors, and all are welcome, you in Canberra and across our nation. 
we will double our efforts to make Australian branding very effective. We have an initiative spearheaded by Mr Harold Mitchell, Australia's foremost advertising guru, to increase trust in Australian products bearing its mark and become a vital link in meeting China's growing demands for high quality produce of vital identification. Equally, an improved friendship with China will provide readily available capital for food security infrastructure on a passive basis as we required in Australia. So let me turn now to our water project. I mentioned in my introduction um, our determination to not see the wildlife and livestock perish and my own family never again shutting the gates on dying stock covered by dust storms and drought conditions. Such stories litter the Australian agricultural sector and mine and my wife Nicola's are not unique. I believe we can greatly improve the utilisation of Australia's water resources to reduce the occurrence of these devastating events and dramatically increase our agricultural activity. We as a nation never want to see this waste of life again. Mindaroo's plan is to harness the huge potential of northern and trans-Australian underground water resources to support increased agricultural production on major scale. I've set my team the aspirational challenge to develop the plans to harness at least 5,000 gigalitres of water from these existing basins to irrigate new areas for agricultural production and to drought-proof others. The investment and infrastructure in these projects will then be able to support and subsidise the drought proofing of the many vulnerable areas of Australia and make our entire nation stronger. So we've engaged, Minder is engaged on, with Australia's major universities to lead a number of localised studies on the location of water sources, the feasibility of capture, extraction, transport of water and the investigation of the most efficient crop types for land now to be far more intensively. We've gone to the web of great universities of, around Australia and asked them to study with us their local water challenges and huge underground water resources yet untapped. Let me just talk to, to this briefly. We have water basins that will allow us to minimise the infrastructure costs of constructing dams and pipelines. Let's target local air, areas around these water sources. Let's promote intensive production of cereals, grains, fruits, veggies, pastures for protein production and the like. And with the support of the leadership of Australia and China, which I believe is secure, I'll be discussing this huge project along with other nation building infrastructure schemes at the SBLF in China in just a few weeks. My aim is to encourage strong, long-term, passive interest from the Chinese in these projects to help every Australian unlock our nation's potential. These projects will, will undoubtedly attract sceptics and will need to work within a myriad of state and federal politics. But before my green friends leap for their microphones, think first underground water, not just dams. Think of areas such as the massive Canning Basin in the dry and arid plains of Western Australia and Central Australia. We located many of our water intensive industries in the Canning Basin where there is yet none. We would barely dent that huge water carrying capacity. Yet each year it recharges, literally topped up again like a bathtub. Take it out one end every year, it's topped up again the other. So that's an example of that inland sea that our pioneers of our country search for. It's only metres away at any time when so many explore explorers met their own death from thirst. Yet it was not in front of them but beneath their feet. Development of such massive and unutilised resources will take serious investment. So I've asked the Australian government and the Chinese to explore this with me, to take a long-term attitude to encourage the development of Australian agricultural food supplies through infrastructure, through a waterproofed and drought-proofed country, Australia. So far, Chinese investment into Australia, ag ag agriculture has been well received. They've acted as strong custodians of the land and they're capable of being a strong and passive partner in projects of massive scale, which our capital alone could not develop. I can assemble the people with that same innovative spirit and project leadership that helped me build Fortescue from scratch to the great company it is today. Australia has great potential and we need to move fast before others do to take its place, to take our place. And when I think about this, I'm reminded Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll forgive me, the iron ore industry in Australia. We turned a blind eye to the awakening of, the, of Brazil's seaborne iron ore capacity those decades ago. 
and never has a nation squandered the potential of its future more than when Australia encouraged its customers to seek other suppliers beyond our shores. Our nation's unreliability back then, ladies and gentlemen, our inconsistency of iron ore supply in the once heavily unionised Pilbara iron ore fields led directly to the forfeiture of hundreds of billions of dollars of exports that could have built Australian schools, hospitals, universities and infrastructure today. Assets which would make our nation and our children's future stronger and safer. Australia kept the door open for others to fill and they filled our shoes and that huge opportunity for wealth and prosperity was shared with competitor nations in our industries. A most relevant lesson for agriculture today. The opportunity for Australia and for each of us is now. We need to think on a large and global scale. We have enormous latent potential in the agricultural sector. We must, we must attempt to increase our product, our product of capacity. We cannot give in. We must be determined. We must go for step change infrastructure. So ladies and gentlemen, just in closing, I really thank you for your time. This will help underpin and protect our existing production, but it will grow our domestic supply and protect it for all time from the devastating impacts of drought. We must think differently. Stop treating our output as just a commodity only. We must energetically explore the value add, which is so obvious in our supply chains and capture that upside for our own children. We offer the world's best quality and safest products. So the time is now, ladies and gentlemen, failure to see this moment will be catatonic to the industry we all know and love not to mention our economy. I will continue to do my best for our industry. I rely on your support and you may certainly be assured of mine. Thank you, Abed. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.